What people are looking for is the message that they belong, <clears throat> that they're part of something, that they are seen and heard, and that despite, or perhaps because of the uniqueness of their experience, they are valued. They What people are looking for is a message that they belong, <clears throat> that they're part of something, that they are seen and heard, and that despite, or perhaps because of the uniqueness of their experience, they are valued. They want to feel represented. That's British Muslim actor and musician Riz Ahmed speaking at the British Parliament back in 2017 about the importance of representation on screen, especially Muslim representation, which is severely lacking and, yeah, distorted too. According to a new study by the Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism, even though Muslims make up 25% of the world's population, they only make up 1% of characters on popular TV shows. The study's lead author writes, not only is this radical erasure an insult, it has the potential to create real-world injury for audiences, particularly Muslims who may be the victims of prejudice, discrimination, and even violence. And that's not all. Their study also analyzed how Muslims are represented when they're given some rare screen time. The largest percentage of Muslim characters with a job, nearly 40%, were criminals, while over 30% were perpetrators of violence. Yep, the terrorist baddies. It's a double whammy. Muslim representation on screen is both limited and negative. But Egyptian-American comedian and actor Rami Youssef has been changing that in recent years. In 2019, his semi-autobiographical show Rami launched on Hulu, in which we see the character of Rami, young, self-absorbed, having sex with different women, but also praying at the mosque and fasting in Ramadan. Rami doesn't try to run away from his Muslimness in this very unique TV show, a show the New York Times called Quietly Revolutionary when it launched three years ago. But it's not just revolutionary, it's also just a really funny and very authentic comedy which just launched its third season. Our traditions have a lot in common. Yeah, I've, I've always felt that, that we share this deep Christmaslessness, you know? Huh? Like, uh, like not celebrating Christmas, right? Like, like the whole country, this whole country is like worshiping Santa. And, and we're like, no, I don't think something, this doesn't feel right, you know? Mm. I remember being in kindergarten, everyone's talking about Santa. I look over at this kid, Ari, and I'm like, dude, we know the truth. You know, we know this is just like a capitalist lie. Like Santa's not, it's not in the texts. Like none of them, none of the, none of the testaments. Over there, we have conflicts, but over here, we see our brotherhood. And Rami Yusuf himself in real life isn't afraid to talk God or Islam. Here's how he famously reacted when he won a Golden Globe for his acting on the show in 2020. Well, yeah, so I, I would like to thank my God, uh, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> thank you, God. This is, this is thanks to God and Hulu and... <laughs> Hulu, uh, you guys, look, I know you guys haven't seen my show. Uh, it's, uh... <laughs> Everyone's like, is this an editor? Um... <laughs> we made a very specific show uh, about an Arab Muslim family uh, living in New Jersey, and this means a lot to be recognized on this level. Joining me now, Rami Youssef himself, the award-winning co-creator and star of Rami. Season three is now streaming on Hulu. Rami, thanks so much for coming on the show. How did this very unique and acclaimed show of yours come about? Because it is a show that defies so many stereotypes, defies so many expectations. Did you deliberately set out to make a show that would do that? Was that your goal from the beginning? Let's do something so different that people's heads are going to spin. 
I think there was a real recognition that what we wanted to do didn't exist. I really wanted to show a character, like you said earlier, that wasn't trying to run away from who he was. I felt that a lot of immigrant stories uh, fell into uh, trying to dispel violent stereotypes or uh, even just creating an erasure of where we came from and kind of trying to prove a, a bit of a homogenous point. Uh, there's always kind of this underlying message of, hey, you know, we could be white too, uh, which I felt was a strange uh, message for uh, people to see, especially when you want to see yourself uh, in some way. And so I think we wanted to make something really specific where um, there was someone, uh, and, 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 and by extension, really a family, um, trying to hold on to tradition uh, and also in that propulsion of, of being in the present time. Yeah, and you did set out to do that, and it has been a huge success, both critically and uh, in terms of popular appeal. I do wonder what you think Rami added to the conversation about Muslims in America, because season one launched in 2019 in the midst of the Trump presidency, Islamophobia, anti-Muslim hate crimes out of control. And then this very unique show about a Muslim American guy comes along. How much were you conscious of the Islamophobic climate you were launching? And I mean, the show touches in very funny and unique ways on things like 9-11 and even Tahrir Square. Yeah, I think obviously we're aware of the landscape. Um, I live here, and 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 we're seeing it and 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 feeling it uh, in 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 various ways. But I think the show was never a direct response to that. I think this show, um, in in a way, the the spiritual journey that the character and and the family are going through, I think, is really universal. He he's really trying to find that space between his higher self and his lower self and who he wants to be, but there's who he actually is and 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 he's kind of dealing with his ego and his selfishness and so yeah. i think we really rooted it in in something that i felt could be timeless and then i think in terms of um any tension towards uh people who even look or speak Arabic, um, that is, is very high. Uh, you then see, you know, characters speaking Arabic, but they're ordering food or they're laughing with each other or cursing at each other over some trivial thing in the way that we all do. And so we, I think offer, um, one very limited specific, but I think, uh, wholly kind of, you know, human contribution to, uh, on screen. Yeah. And let's talk about some of the storylines and uh, content of this show. You, of course, identify in real life, the real life Rami, uh, as a believing Muslim. You famously said, as we just played, uh, Allahu Akbar at the Golden Globes. And your show, in the show, your character Rami is both a Muslim who prays, goes to the mosque, doesn't drink, but also has premarital sex with non-Muslim women, struggles with all sorts of haram or forbidden temptations. And I'll be honest, a lot of Muslims in America I know, Rami, they're torn on whether they should like and promote the show because it's very real, it's very funny, it doesn't hide how complicated real life is, even for Muslims, or whether they should avoid the show because, again, let's be honest, it involves a lot of un-Islamic, pretty out there stuff. Do you personally get that reaction a lot or no? And how do you deal with it if you do? Yeah, I get it all the time. I mean, I think that, um, you know, ultimately, I think what what we're doing again is creating a very limited, but also I think real window into uh, a type of family and a type of guy. And I think uh, even people who um, maybe are uncomfortable by it, I don't think anyone's denying that there is reality to it. And so I think for me, we uh, live in communities that sometimes we have a hard time talking about the things that are in the show. And so I think even if there's dislike around the show or there's tension around the show, I feel happy to be part of creating a reference point to talk about those things because sometimes in our communities, we don't want to talk about them directly or we don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Um, but the show creates a reference point almost in a way to, you could be debating about the show, but you're actually debating about the things that are in the show, which, uh, you know, are very, again, very human and very much part of, of what we're all dealing with, but you don't have to say it's about that or it's about you. You could just say, man, I really hate Rami, right? Don't, don't you? I, I think that's good. I actually think that's really funny. And I think it, um, if it starts more conversation, I, I'm, I'm glad. 
So I've got to ask, Rami, I am a brown Muslim of Indian origin. My parents are a doctor and an engineer. I did something very unconventional at the time by doing a politics degree and then becoming a journalist, not a doctor or an engineer, to my mother's great disappointment. I don't work in tech. How much support did you get from your family when you told them that you wanted to drop out of school and go into comedy and acting? How much support do you still get? And what is your advice to other brown folks who want to follow in your footsteps? Um, you know, I think that my parents were always supportive in the sense of it being a hobby. I don't think that they thought it could be a career. And the truth is, it is really hard, as you know, to get to where you are. Um, it, it takes uh, a lot of hard work, but also um, a little bit of you know, luck or destiny or, or whatever it is that you believe in. Um, but, but I think that, you know, uh, in, in terms of advice, it's, it's just uh, if you're going to do it, just try to be as, as honest as possible with what you like and what makes you, you know, tick as an artist and, 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 and um, not worry so much about uh, what people might think or might not like. I think our biggest issue um, when it comes to art is, is self-censorship. And so I, I don't think it's censorship from anyone other than our own selves and the the voices uh, that have, whether they've been implanted in us or live with us or however it goes, but us stopping ourselves uh, is often uh, the thing that's most in our way. And so I would uh, push past all of that and, and, you know, try and make something that, um, yeah, that, that feels honest and doesn't feel um, hateful or, or attacking anyone in, you know, emotionally in any way, but just something that could be hopefully an offering, you know, and, and, and I think that's always really yeah. um, good work, you know. And Rami, I've interviewed a lot of actors, comedians, celebs on this show over the last few years who say they got very political during the Trump era. They weren't political before and they got politicized. I wonder how political a person are you? I think I read somewhere, correct me if I'm wrong, that you were a part of an LA fundraiser for the Democratic Socialists of America. Do you see yourself as somewhat of the left? Um, you know, I, I, uh, I think that being involved in, in, in the election was a really important thing. Um, I didn't ever like publicly um, back uh, a candidate in any direct way, but I did really want to, um, you know, encourage people to just get involved and especially locally. I think that's a big issue uh, in America is that there's really no, um, yeah, no one's attuned to what's happening in their own neighborhood. And so I think being involved with that is, is, is really exciting um, and, and, and important. Um, but I think, you know, a lot of our systems also have failed us. And so I understand the, the jadedness. And I think especially for um, a lot of brown people living in America, there is this yeah. um, what's the point feeling. And I think I'm, I'm really invested in trying to push past that and, and, and trying to see if there's ways that I could help back people who want to be publicly involved in, 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 in trying to better that system. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, to that degree that that's the level of my involvement. And Rami, one last question before I let you go. Your dad, I believe, was a former manager at the Plaza Hotel, was it? And worked for Donald Trump, new Trump. Did you have any dealings with Trump? I love this idea that you made a comedy on TV which talks about the Trump Muslim ban, given the direct connection between your Egyptian immigrant dad and Trump himself in real life pre-presidency. I, uh, I did not have any direct uh, dealings, but I think there was always this irony, especially as, um, you know, that, that recent presidential cycle and, and the things that were said about immigrants, but knowing firsthand that any success that any of the businesses were having in New York, especially, um, you know, his personal businesses, I knew for a fact were run by immigrants like my father. And so I think, um, yeah, highlighting that irony, I, I did talk about that in my first special um, <laughs> because, yeah, it's just, I guess, you know, my job is to figure out how to make it funny because <laughs> a lot of the times it's not 